All right, welcome back. Welcome back. We are back with um, Howie Linux. Uh, today, we got a couple of topics to talk about, several topics to talk about. Um, um, one is dealing with, uh, so it's still cybersecurity focus, but surveillance. And then we'll talk about uh, crypto and cybersecurity. And then we're also going to talk about uh, what's another one? Oh yeah, our anniversary. Not our anniversary, but Linux anniversary. And then we'll talk about compliance and fuzzing. So we got a lot of lot of information to cover. I'm gonna let Dion do on um, the intro here uh, and go from there. So over to you. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Let me pull up my screen. All right. Okay. It's on you. So we are celebrating 30. <laughs> Hold on, I can't even hear. Hold on, let me turn this up. What'd you say? So we're celebrating 30 years of Linux. So we're going to say happy 30th birthday to Tux. Can you believe it? It is 30 years. Tux has, is younger than a lot of us. I know Tux is definitely younger than I am. So when you are thinking about Linux and what that means in the space, and how you came to the space go ahead and um just think about it linux has only been around for 30 years so you have a, enough time to get in the space and make a um contribution i don't know where tam is going but we'll just keep it moving so along with that we want to say happy fifth anniversary to women in linux so when you are looking around and you want to know what organization I can donate to and the contributions, if we made any contributions in your life, go ahead and click donate button at womeninlinux.org and um, help us sustain our weekly meetups. We definitely um, appreciate you all for that. Um, our Thursday study groups. So happy fifth birthday, um, women in Linux. And so here are a couple of events, the timelines of 30 years of uh, Linux. I only found up to 2015, but as you can see, in 1996, the, the Tux mascot was created. I moved to Atlanta in 1996, so I was definitely an adult. So I we are older than Tux. Uh, let's see. And so being that it's our anniversary, I want you guys to go ahead and save your calendars for uh, October 16th at 6 p.m. We will be having a uh, virtual happy hour to celebrate our fifth year anniversary. So BYOB is encouraged. It is virtual. Um, we've had, this will be our fourth and last happy hour of the year. So if you haven't come, out and party with us you are missing it but make sure that you mark your calendars and come on out along with our fifth year anniversary we have some limited edition uh, merchandise after this year it'll be no longer available so come and get your merchandise now our um merchandise our tees and our sweatshirts are unisex so go ahead men um, they are a nice size and they will definitely fit Let's see if anybody hasn't come uh, to our website or you're new to the space, go ahead and uh, connect with us at womeninlinux.org. It will bring you to our, if you connect with us, it'll bring you to our Slack page. Our Slack, uh, let me see if I can bring mine up. Our Slack has a whole bunch of great resources and that's where our community um, gathers. So, Come on out and join us on Slack and definitely engage. Uh, what else, Tamika? What else? Is there anything else that I, I, I need to let the people know? What's your standard shades on? No, I was trying to figure out how to prop myself up in here. You know, I'm, I'm trying to see something. But no, uh, you can do go over the, the uh, womeninlinux.org and how people can connect with us. I did that already. I think you definitely missed that by doing whatever that you were doing. So hey, I, I did that. 
And if you look at my screen here, I'm going to go to our screen. Bam. Yeah. Gotcha. Cool. All right. So let's get into it. So you have the intro. You understand how to connect with us. Understand with me. Meetup.com as well to slash women and Linux uh, for events and as well as everything social media and women and Linux. But let's get so let's get into it. Let me pull up the first link that I really want to discuss. I posted this in Slack uh, already, uh, but before I do that, let's talk about it. All right, so um, there's a couple of things I want to do before we get into that. All right, so CentOS is reaching its end of life. CentOS 8 reaches its end of life at the end of 2021. So anybody on CentOS 8, um, it is end of life. You would not uh, be uh, upgraded into a real, I mean, real. CentOS 9, that's that's not, it says potential replacements will be, well, replacements will have released two new distributions. And this is on DigitalOcean. Uh, CentOS Stream 8 and Rocky Linux 8.4. So, Tamika, are you uh, sharing a screen with us? No, I'm just reading. Oh, okay, cool. Good. That's all on Digital Ocean. Okay. All right. So now, I do have a screen shared though. Is my screen not showing up? Yeah, it is. But I was wondering, it wasn't matching what you were saying. So no, I was, just I was reading off checking. my notes. Okay, reading off my notes. All right. So, um, Digital Ocean released some um, diversity, um, a diversity, equity, inclusion report for 2020. All right, so let's go look at, I don't care about the the, the 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 statement, you all can read that for yourself. Let's go look at the metrics. So as you can see here, and what's in blue is, is 2020 and what's in, in black is the census. All right, so we can see from African-American or black, 6% and then they have 12% um, from the census, meaning overall, that's what most people are seeing, right? So they're falling below the census. And you can see for um, some other race, they got, they fall below, and even uh, uh, American Indian and Asian, you can see where they line up at. Then they break it down by gender for this one. Dee could drop the link if you all are interested in that inside of the thing, but outside of the chat. So there you go for there. And then they come down here and they pretty much just put it in a different format so you can see what that actually visually looks like. So then they, on, on their new hires, they have, they're hiring 69% men, 29% women and others that self to uh, chose to self not to identify. And then they have a breakdown by race here. You can see where we're at. You can see here. You can see what that looks like visually. Um, then then the new hires by race, you can see what that looks like. And then they go into employee level by gender, individual contributors, and then management, female, and then individual contributors. And then you can see management. You can see what, what's, what's going on there. Um, they also have job level by race, uh, POC, uh, blue, white uh, here, and then chose to self-identify. So what that looks like. And D can drop this link and you can go and uh, read a little bit more about uh, Digital Ocean's diversity initiative, what their pledge is and so forth, right? Um, also that came out this week, um, let, me, let me pull up Slack. Uh, you saw from the Biden administration uh, that Microsoft, Apple, and one, Microsoft, Apple, and Amazon, more than likely, that's who the other one was, came out with a, a cybersecurity initiative for, to, to uh, take care of uh, cybersecurity by investing $30 billion into it. Um, I don't know if you all saw that. Um, let me see. I could probably pull that up. Let me do it here. Uh, 30 billion cyber security. And we'll just do it like that. That should come right up. Oh, yes, it didn't. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I think it was from a uh, 
Biden. Let's do that. I think that came out. Yeah. Right there. Two days ago. All right. Uh, where they pledged, um, Microsoft pledged $20 billion, Google pledged $10 billion to develop more advanced security solutions in areas of security by design, zero trust, software supply chain, and open source software. Remember, I talked about being a part of open source projects this week and how to get into different jobs and so forth. I, I spoke on that. And then they talk about who was in attendance uh, there. Uh, in particular, you should be looking at um, the SBA when we're looking at this. But you can see who did, who was there and what does that mean to them, right? All right. Next one is federal government can't meet the challenge alone. They have a hundred day, a uh, hundred day initiative to improve cyber security across the electric sector. What does that mean? That means jobs. That means contracts. That means people getting into this uh, from all walks of life. Ordered the creation of a framework. So there's a new framework out and began a campaign to get G7 countries to hold nations that harbor ransom threats actors accountable. Right. So uh, you should go read this because um, this is really going to be forced in a lot of companies and a lot of startups are going to have to come on board as well, too. Um, so I'll drop this link inside of uh, the chat and D can post this. Can I post it? No, I can't post it. Let me see where I can post it. Let me see. B, you should have that, right? You, get, you got that, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. Do, 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 uh, see, I'm just reading through comments. Hey, Frank. Thank you. They, uh, is that Frank? Oh, that's Fran B. Say, I got to take off my shades. It look like Frank. She's <laughs> Thomas. Told her those are... Uh, those are uh, hot, hot, hot. Uh, we're not, we're not old enough to be cougars. So my other friend, she calls us young cheetahs. She that's what we old enough about. to be cougars. You, you not just I. Mm -mm. Just no, ma'am. No, ma'am. Use the old. Ma'am. Use the old, and you can fill in the blank. Use the old. No, ma'am. Use the. <laughs> no, ma'am. <laughs> you can fill in the blank. No, ma'am. <laughs> He's a oh no man. <laughs> we just gonna tell the people to go ahead and like and subscribe if you have any really? new the women in Linux and you never um really? you never seen us before and you are no you're clueless to our witty banter. We're just playing with each other. That's my friend. Okay. I like her a little bit. But go ahead and like uh this video. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And uh, leave some comments, meet some people, engage. All the right. community, grown, not old. I like that one. But you know what? I've been buying toilet paper since I've been 17. So uh, it is, uh, I've been buying toilet paper for a long time. So that's when I tell people they're officially old when you start buying your own toilet paper. The 4040 Club, yeah. I'm definitely in the 4040 club. All right. So this one here, I dropped this inside of Slack, right? And this deals with, uh, this is, so in terms of AI and facial recognition, the United States is behind on that. China has been doing this now for a very long time. And so um, even in their airports, and this I knew about this years ago, at least probably five years ago, that when you fly in to China or whatnot, they, they have facial recognition. They were doing AI machine learning back then. They're well ahead of the game when it comes to that. Um, but this video, if it talks about, um, oh man, we got so much good topics today, uh, about how uh, they use facial recognition uh, to even in, in this video, they talk about how they use facial recognition, 
recognition to even tell you how you're feeling based upon your face, based upon your actions, the things that you've done over the days. They even have um, in this video where they talk about they've uh, pretty much in, um, put some people in slave camps based upon their actions and their and their and their face and, and so forth um like that so um uh, check this out the reason why i brought this up is because there was an article that actually came out um and let me get that article i think i have it up do i have it up no that's the crypto i don't have it up hold on let me get it up all right, so the article that came out that the United States is upping their facial recognition um, um, in the in the U.S. Uh, and they're probably using following that model, right? Um, where we're starting to talk about, and you can look at this from a job perspective, and you can look this look at this from a human perspective, and you can look at this from how to protect yourself perspective. And you can also look at it as like uh, you being protected perspective. Um, the U.S. government agencies plan to increase their use of facial recognition technology. Um, there is a 90 page report on this. Uh, so you can drop this link so you all I don't know if you can get this. I subscribe to MIT. But let's go click on this report. All right. Uh, facial recognition, current plan, and the uses by federal agencies. This goes on a per agency base. Um, so when we're looking at this, they're talking about in response to GAO's survey about facial recognition, um, activities in the fiscal year 2020, 18 of 24 agencies reported using facial recognition technology systems for one or more purposes, including digital access of or cybersecurity, domestic law enforcement, and physical security. 10 agencies reported related research and development. For example, agency, agencies reported uh, research and uh, facial record technician or FRT ability to identify individuals wearing masks during COVID-19 uh, pandemic and to detect image manipulation. Furthermore, 10 agencies reported plans to expand their FRT through fiscal year 2023, for example, an agency plans to pilot the use of facial recognition tech, FRT technology to uh, automate the identif to identify the verification process at airports for travelers. Trust me, sorry there. Digital access, domestic law, physical, other eye tracking it's already in your car if you don't if you're in your car you can t some of the cars tell you when you're going off the road or when you're not paying attention national security defense and border and transportation security and then it gets into in this report um the different like summaries for the federal agencies some comments that they've had um and then a, a little breakdown here of federally owned facial recognition te technician systems in in 2020 um and drop a one if this if this uh if you like in this content um and what and what your thoughts are yep uh, it is a double-edged sword all right let's keep going and then they just got like acronyms right here and then who really put this together you can see that it came out on the 24th so here they talk about the border patrol or border protection and transportation security administration um we also get into uh it talks about uh facial recognition technology works a little background on that and then here's a breakdown capture face detection, face template creation, and then they go into a verification process on, on the person, right? Kind of like face off, right? Uh, federal use of federal uh, official uh, FRT, uh, what agencies are using it, uh, including tribal and local territorial governments 
commercial facial record technician service providers. So remember earlier I was talking about the ships and so forth, um, the logistics and so forth. Um, just think about uh, being able to, and we can do this now uh, from a satellite. You know, from a satellite, we can beam down on somebody's face then do an analysis on machine or machine learning analysis or AI machine learning pool from multiple databases and then do points matching um, on on that person's face to say, you know, hey, this person matches this person or what have you, right? We already can do that, that stuff, but just imagine how farther we're gonna go with that, right? Um, let's see. All right, in here, they give you like how domestic uh, law enforcement, and we're gonna get into domestic law enforcement as well too. I'm gonna show you uh, some stuff that you may not even be aware of um, when we're talking about this um and who's building these places out you you'll see what i'm talking about in a minute all right so agencies most often uh reported using facial record technician frt i just want to say it i don't know why for digital access and domestic law enforcement all right so here's the departments uh that have that, that used frt systems conducted research, entered into transactions with non-federal entities and regulated non-federal entities. And you can see the black dots here are all lining up. Transportation didn't, labor didn't, but an urban, an urban development didn't, and education didn't. But you can see that uh, DOD, edu uh, DOD, commerce, agriculture, interior, I mean, agriculture, you need to think about supply chain, uh, EPA, uh, GSA, uh, aeronautics and space administration. And then you can look and see well, like who's got a dot across the board, Homeland Security, right? Right. More, more uh, companies or more agencies that are using it. Social Security Administration, BIT, uh, OPM. Uh, NSF, National Science Foundation, of course, right? So I just want to give you <laughs> uh, this. This is reported purposes of facial record technician, uh, FRT, used by federal agencies in 2020. They have more of that. And then they break it down. But the list goes on with this. I'll drop this um, inside the Slack if you all are interested. Or just better yet, just if you're interested, just say, just uh, uh, hit me up in Slack, and I'll I'll just post it in Slack for you, um, to directly to you if you if you're interested in it. You may not be interested in it, but here it shows you the number of owned systems. Department of Defense has seven systems, accessed by the Department of Justice and the Department of Homeland Security, purposes for physical security, domestic law enforcement national security and defense and other. We talk the Department of Energy for physical security. Department of Health has three systems. The DOJ has seven systems. And owned uh, access FRT systems by other agencies from the Department of Defense and the Department of State. Um, and they show you what they're using for, right? So who has number the, the most number of systems, right? And who's, and who's using them, right? All right, now um, here state and localities that own facial recognition uh, technology systems accessed by federal agencies in 2020. You can see where, where you're at, right? All right, you can see, All right? Idaho, look, we know why Idaho, I know why Colorado, I know why Texas, North Dakota. Mississippi and Alabama. Well, I already know why the DMV up in here, New York, most definitely. Well, I already know about them, right? So here you go. The states owning FRT systems accessed by by government, localities owning FR, FRT systems. Pinellas County owns a facial recognition tech uh, system, right? All right. So there's, you know, you have to look at that, right? 
And it's so funny that they got this grayed out over here. <laughs> That's hilarious, but okay. It's just not reported. All right, so here's the commercial vendors that own it, right? Clearview AI. Somebody go look up Clearview AI. And Vigilant Solutions. Um, I guess acute a content, acute uh face face ID. Um, check those out. Now you know the companies that they're working with. All right. And I hope this helps. I hope this this was <laughs> I hope I hope you got some information out of that, right? All right. So remember I was up here and I was talking about, oh, we're gonna talk about these companies, these other companies, right? So let's get into these uh companies. All right, so um, here's another article uh, I want to bring over. Inside the rise of police departments and real crime, real time crime centers, real time crime centers. That um, sounds like a show. It is that I would definitely watch. It is. It, this this happened. So we we we'll already have this. You can go look this up. It's not nothing made up, right? Where if gunshots are let off, there's a, if, if it, it, it'll locate um, in your cities where the gunshot let off at automatically sends an alert and, uh, and automatically sends people to the area um, by listening to what one, what gunshots sound like, um, shattered glass um, being broken in, like it depends on how loud it is, right? So um, car alarms going off. Uh, being able to be proactive versus reactive is where we're at. And these are already out here. Um, just letting you know. And they talk about uh, what these real-time crime centers uh, do. And so um, Pinellas County just had their police department precinct uh, redone. They are a real-time crime center um, as well as Atlanta has one. Um, as well as uh, several places have them. You already have these 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 places. You're just not aware of them. But we're gonna deep, do a deep dive of what's in those places and uh, the technology behind them. Right. Um, just want you to be aware. All right. So um, let me see. If in and Dee can drop this article. Um, but they talk about uh, take a car thief. Let's 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 blow this up. All right. Uh, All right. It says take a car thief. Recovering stolen cars has been a, an early success of cities network of license plate readers, as what you call it says. But thefts increase in the winter because people warm up their cars in the driveway and then go back in. And then leave them running and unattended. They said this includes an incident last November when a young mother left a 10 month old in the back seat of a car running and which was stolen. Both the mayor and the chief of police told the license plate uh, reader, told me that the license plate reader had been instrumental. So basically, we're reading license plates, right, in the cities, like we're reading them as they go by. So we got facial recognition. Now we got license plates readers. We can, we can capture that see where they're at, where they're going, where the, what areas, what routes they can take to get in and out of those areas. All right, so <clears throat> this is where we're at. And it says, the police department maintains a web page advising residents on 10 ways to reduce your vehicle uh, from being stolen. There's a, there's a link for that. Um, but when RTC was launched, so now we're going to get into RT, RTCC, real-time crime uh, center. So I want to pull this up. Uh, so you can have this. Um, all right. This one. So this is a company called Constant Technologies. They build out these real-time crime centers, right? Right? So that's what they do. They build they build them out. And they've been doing it. The, real the first real-time crime center opened in New York in 2005. They're already here, right? And what and what that looks like. And they talk about they got uh, over here. Uh, 
what they what they look like. So the technology behind them. Choosing an integrator. We can go here to February. You can see improving operation system functionality, how, how design plays a role. Right? Um, mission critical video wall applications, um, trends, the furniture and the workstations, how they build that out. Let's go back and look in April. And then they just talk about recent trends. Right? All right. So that's who builds that out. Um, here is um, a report. Um, it says a, the mission of a real time, uh, I'm blow it up. The mission of a the mission of a real time crime center is to provide law enforcement agency with the ability to cap capitalize a on a wide and expanding range of technologies for efficient and effective policing. Such efforts may allow, may allow law enforcement to respond quickly uh, or even immediately to crimes in progress. Right, and then they just kind of go on to envision what that looks like, and then they say here are RTC videos from a variety of departments in the United States: Albuquerque, Austin, or Charlotte, Fresno, Memphis, New York, Newark, Ogden, uh, St. Louis, and then they talk about. Um, let's click on see if we get a video. Yep, and then they show the actual. This was in two thousand nine, right? So been around for a while right all right so now let's look at this uh surveillance component uh are real-time uh crime centers and then they show the one like in miami garden they show the one in atlanta um albuquerque uh here's the one in ogden is sacramento right it needs to get upgraded over time, right? What you saw in 2005, 2009 is not the same. All right. Um, that's that one. I'm just making sure I covered the, my links that I had. Yep. They were good. All right. Let me check the comments here. Do you need a cybersecurity degree for this? No, it helps. But no. Uh all right. So let me make sure I cover everything. Do at least yep, let's cover that. Um let's see, I think I covered this one. And then we're gonna move on to our next subject. Yep, we covered that. All right, next subject. All right, so our next subject is this one. What happened? $600 million gone in the biggest crypto theft in history. So from reading the articles, one of the big problems is when you when your money is stolen from the bank, right, they have a way to track whether where it was received, well, where it was sent from and who received it, right? The way, they have a way of tracking it down. From what I'm gathering from these articles for the crypto, they have no way of tracking that, right? Um, so uh, one of the big ones was uh, uh, hackers have stolen $600 million in cryptocurrency from the decentralized finance platform Poly Network in what it says is the largest theft in history. Um, the vulnerability in the Poly Network allowed the thief to make off with funds the platform said the amount of money you hacked is the biggest in DeFi history. Uh, they urge members to uh, 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 members of the cryptocurrency ecosystem to blacklist the assets coming from uh, an address by the attacker to siphon away funds. 
uh, which included uh, a mixture of coins, 33 million in Tether, uh, according to Tether CTO. Uh, the cryptocurrency exchange said it was a Binance said it was coordinating with all security partners to actively help. Um, so, you know, here we go. We we're talking about uh, crypto uh, security. Right now we're talking about cybersecurity from that perspective. Here's the one for Coinbase. Uh, Coinbase customers are up in arms uh, that the hackers drain their crypto wallet. Um, blow that up. Uh, according to CBS News, I let Coinbase customers across the U.S. to discover thousands of customers' complaints. For instance, one couple logged into the servers to discover 168,000 in crypto currency had vanished from after the hackers were able to take over their account to add insult to injury the couple was unable to reach coinbase for support after the incident occurred while Bates now employed live chat as well as email and telephone to provide the customers the popular cryptocurrency company only response to customers via email uh they've assembled like you know best practices or whatnot but Again, you got $168,000 on your money gone, right? Here, a white hat hacker uh, behind the $610 million crypto heist returns most of the money. Uh, the still unidentified hacker claims the attack was carried out for fun to expose the vulnerability on the platform. Uh, and that's where they're at uh on that poly network they return some of the money but they didn't return all of it right all right here is a link um uh on a guy on twitter i was uh, reading over as i was doing some research uh bobby ong crypto is very dangerous and inversal place never reuse passwords these are the best practices he came up with use a password manager uh two form factor uh everything Consider using a hardware-based two-form factor. Use a crypto uh, hardware uh, uh, wallet. Oh, let me see. Uninstall Chrome extensions. Use separate browser profiles. Limit smart contract approvals. Don't dox yourself and secure your mobile phone. Because, oh yeah, and don't click on ads. Like if you see ad and then there, click on the actual link. Be careful about giveaways, tweets, and DMs. Never download or open files from strangers. Be careful with cold emails. This is not a step uh, specifically, but I just want to share super write up. Uh, follow everything that she recommended here. And then they have a, a guide for Dominic's there, uh, securing your accounts and so forth, right? So you can drop that link in case you all were interested in that. Now let's get into shift uh, crypto security, right? What does it mean to uh, shift into this, uh, crypto security? What what can you do? What can you follow? Um, is this an emerging um, a, an emerging field? Absolutely. Uh, will there be more to come uh, about this? Absolutely. So how do you secure an enterprise? How do you secure a fintech company uh, that's using crypto security or that needs crypto security? What, what how should you get into this? Uh, I don't wanna say degree wise, but maybe certification wise. Who has that? Uh, who has uh, this out there? These are all things we still need to discover. I didn't do my research on that just yet, but I just want you to put a bug in your ear to things that you could be looking at. Um, here, Bloomberg crypto security custody problems and with crypto exchange finance and crypto. Uh, we have the links for these. I, I D has that. Um, here is another one, crypto security and hidden gems. I didn't finish this one. It's a live stream. It's an hour long. Um, I haven't finished this one, but he goes into like how to uh, secure your your stuff and what could that look like for you. All right. So why is this huge? 
Crypto security jumps 10x. This was August the 17th. This article came out over the last year as the sector hits its sweet spot with venture capitalists. So they're just now kind of putting money into it. So you really will be on the cutting edge if you're looking at this, right? So they talk about the funding, uh, 50 million from 2017, 2018, 104, 2019. 176 but 2020 they did 98 and then this year it was one billion dollars right so it's still time to get in right if we're talking about starting in 2017 probably didn't catch on to 2018 really 2019 so two years ago and 2020 you know we had what we had and now 2021 and you see all these things getting hacked so you know this is where we at fireblock is the biggest contributor to this year of uh, funding the company often describes itself as shopify for crypto since it helps a variety of business issue around digital assets from security to compliance and i talked we're getting to compliance i have some stuff on compliance um they raised 310 million but they go on to talk about uh crypto security venture funding and let me blow this up ledger fireblocks and polygon so you want to look up these companies you want to look these up because they have more than likely crypto uh security jobs regulations and banks what does that look like from the department of treasury what are they requiring cyber crypto meet cyber security all right fireblock works with checkpoint software technologies which had just acquired uh lacone mobile security so we're looking at fireblocks working with them so now i will most definitely check those two out uh preventing man in the middle attacks um and what investors have interest in and then the methodology crypto security as defined in this argument includes crypto startups in in uh the crunch based data set that are marked as cybersecurity or security companies fi funding numbers include precede and see so they just talking about how they found then gathered the data all right so let me look over here and make sure i'm not missing nothing okay cool all right so now um let's see is this one all right i'm gonna close these two all right so now let's look at uh kraken labs this Kraken Labs deals with, uh, was actually Kraken Security Labs. They deal with uh, uh, security on in a from a crypto perspective, right? And they talk about in here, uh, everybody has to release responsible disclosure if you have a security team. So when people start doing hacks and bugs, this is this is what you use. And here's your bug bounty program, um, and so forth. So. Uh, you have that O, oh, and then they oh, you have to have that up, and then they start talking about cryptocurrency hard wallets, cryptocurrency services, but they also do cryptocurrency security as well too. All right, so you can check this link out as well, and let me know if I'm boring you. Um, <laughs> let me know if you're like we don't care nothing about this. Uh, uh, and here they have a learn. And understanding Bitcoin and crypto, but you know, but I think you've been making a really great point that this is emerging market, yeah. and so it that means it's fresh to get into. So people that are interested in security and cryptocurrency, I think this will be a great place to hone your skills. And it's new, so they're doing things that have never been done before. So your vision and your observation and your thoughts about how things work and should be uh, should work um they're all needed in the space so notepad moment yep uh, another one is here's uh kraken security and they talk they go a little bit going into their stuff uh, how they're doing their security but again you can look at this and model your study and model whatever you want to implement at the comp at the company you work you're working with um, for this, uh, when we're talking about cybersecurity, um, let me pull up uh, this and find my mouse. All right, 
the how. Let me see. I think I might have shown this already. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about that one. That's not a good one. This one was a good one. So we're going to probably, I think it's this link, but we're gonna, I'm, I'm going to talk about it here in a minute. Let's look at this. Yeah, I showed and, that. Um, yeah, All right. Sure so one of the yeah. things I was looking at, I was like, as I was going through this, I was like, well, how does Cap One deal with, you know, crypto and security? So I want to find some links um, on this. And do you probably want to probably just post these notes inside of, um, inside of, not inside of the chat, but underneath it. Um, oh yeah, so yeah, I, I was just going down how how, how this would how they would do it, but um, you can go to uh, Cat One on on YouTube, and they actually have a whole whole list of um, information when it deals with crypto and cybersecurity and how they're doing that. Now I don't know if I got that if I recorded that link. Let me look and see. I don't think I did. Shame on me if I didn't. Shame. Yeah. Yeah. So, crypto security checkup are you doing these 14 things, best practices there? Let me grab this. Um, oh, yeah. Crypto security engines. That's the one I looked at. Well, let me do it. Let's see. Let me do cap one. I wanted to see. Um, let me put it all on word there instead of one. They had a. There was a lady. Um, there was a lady that was talking about uh, crypto security and Capital One and what their and what their posture was. I mean, go here. And I still got more stuff, so bear with me right here. Uh, let me see videos. They don't have it on here. I can't find it. I'll have to go back and look at my my notes um, on that. All right. All right, so now you're like, okay, that's nice. We know about this new thing. In this new field, but how do I, what are, what should I be looking at, right? So nine times out of ten, most of this stuff is in the cloud, and it has to meet some type of compliance and some type of set of rules. So um, one place to start is achieve uh, compliance. Like we want to be able to do compliance for PCI DSS or HIPAA or what have you. Um, so this is just something using AWS config for compliance, but I'm I'm gonna go back. I'm 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 gonna get to some compliance stuff here. Um, and then here, uh, this is if you are government based. you always trying to achieve an ATO, and so they're talking about uh, compliance as code and how to achieve that. And you would still be doing the same process inside your entities, like if you want to do PCI DSS or something, but you want to do compliance as code. You want to be able to write that as code, right? So, and when I say that, hey, person in New England should not be able to, to access somebody's data in, uh, in France do the GD, GDPR rules or whatnot. So you have to put some provisions in place some protections in place. And so that person, even though they work for the company, shouldn't be able to have that direct access without following a set of standards that they need to meet. So we're talking about compliance is code there and being compliant in terms of what standards you need to meet in terms of if you're working with the New York, New York Stock Exchange or or what have you. 
And then I went on to find uh, stuff for those that use GCP, uh, what that could look like for you, uh, how to master security and compliance in the public cloud. Um, here is, I have several links. Like I said, these gonna have to post these somewhere. Um, how do I use a Google Compliance Resource Center? So if you go to cloud.google.com and hit console, and then if you look over here to the left, they have a, what was it called? A resource center uh, for Google Cloud Compliance Resource Center. So we can come over here and let's see if we can find the resource center. Security, uh, Security Command Center, uh, binary authorization, secret manager risk um, it may fall under security uh, command here. And then let's see what we have. Oh, oh yeah, I need to be a part of an organization. Oh, I got to create an organization. All right, so I'll go back and do that. But that lets you know, you know, what you can do, what, what you need to do there. All right. Um, another one, let's see, I think I got that one. I think this is the same link, but let me double verify. Compliance is code, uh, automate compliance using open source technology. This is from Red Hat. This is from 2018, but you get the gist, at least the, how to start. Here. Um, how do I make sure Google Cloud deployment meets CIS Google Cloud security benchmarks? So how do I secure, how do I ensure the CIS benchmarks? You'll, you'll see these benchmarks out there uh, for different profiles. In our meeting on Wednesday, we talked about different profiles your Linux machines can have. So those profiles can have a security profile and under security profile can have PCI, DSS, and so forth. This is what this gets into, so I hope that makes sense for you there. And let me read the comments. Uh, yep, the world is getting crazy. Yep, you'll be ahead of the game. Think you let me know it's not born there. Yeah, there's a way to get NIST standards and feed them in. Um, uh, so if you went to DOD NIST, um, let me see. I'm trying to find out what that um, is a web link. It's not NIST.gov. It's... Um, I'm trying to see NIST. There is a website where you go to. I just forget it off the top of my head. Well, you can you can get a list of uh, D, uh, uh, NIST compliance uh, rules, and then you can take those and automate them with, um, say, something like Ansible. This, this, this is it. Is it? Yeah. So here's one. It's what I was looking for. All right. So here you can download um, uh, Ansible playbook for the FBI. Uh, unsecure. Here's HIPAA. Uh, here's PCI DSS. And then they have the different ones for Rails 8, 1, and 2. All right. And then, so you could take this as a guide. Uh, to lock down your machines. So what you would want to do is take this and create a pipeline. And in that pipeline, you want to apply these standards that you need to meet. And then you want to test against, you want to create some test-driven deployment to test against these standards to make sure that you're actually meeting them. And then you want to create a version control of this so that way every time the machine boots, every time your machine boots up, it's already been tested and passed these standards, and then you can hand it off to whoever needs to use that. So that's just an FYI. All right.
Um, all right. So two more uh, that I want to talk about is fuzzing. What in the world is fuzzing? All right. And I think I started it over here. Let me look and see. No, right here. Fuzzing. All right. This is something I wanted to know for myself, so I figured I'd share it with you. Fuzz testing or fuzzing is a black box software testing technique that basically consists of finding bugs using malformed or semi-malformed data injection into auto in an automated fashion. You can use fuzzing against APIs to uh, check the security of APIs. You can also take over an API too, right? If you find that there's a vulnerability. So, you know, if you're using an API like uh, Amazon API or some API from somewhere else, you can take it over. And so they just kind of go through where fuzzing came from, um, the implementation, um, and then what does that look like, the why, the attack, um, and so forth. And they can send you this link. Um, but here's also, um, a YouTube clip on fuzzing, um, as well. Uh, this one was pretty cool. Welcome to the uh, fuzzing, um, uh, DevOps and you and getting to know fuzzing. Uh, if you go check out OWASP, uh, Dev Slop, you can see that the person that was online was Nancy. You can see the three, uh, uh, the four women all together. And then, then what they talk about, right? I, you know, I'm not giving them a shout out or nothing like that. I just said, this is a, a, a place to go find out. Here's another one, uh, a hands-on guide. This coming up in 14 days, a hands-on guide to security response automation, right? Right. Senior SIRT engineer. <laughs> senior SIRT, I don't know what a senior SIRT is. So let's look up that. Senior SIRT, uh, what was it? Senior SIRT developer, what was it? Engineer. Let's see. Engineer. All right, so oh yeah, it is. I do know what it is. Security incident response team engineer. All right, and here's one at GitLab, right? And they talk about what you'll be doing, which is kind of an introduction into what my next one is, is how does GitLab handle fuzzing? And then in this video, he talks about uh, in 13.4, this came out September the 9th of 2020, introduces API fuzz testing, right? How do you do fuzzing inside of GitLab? All right. All right, so, you know, there's that. And last but not least, this one. We talk about catching bugs with through web API fuzzing using open API. And he talks about going and, and how to uh, catch bugs through the web web API, right? So um, all of this, uh, I hope this like open up some eyes because uh, security from the crypto space, security in those uh, real time crime centers the technologies that they're using, the APIs that they're using, the data that they're using. You most definitely think machine learning and AI, depending on the product that they're using. And now we start to get into uh, here, you know, you know, compliance, you know, even, 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 even the data that they collect, it has to be some set of compliance rules. So this is, this is covering a, we covered a vast broad uh, amount of information from uh, facial recognition to uh, license plate readers to um, uh, uh, how, how to analyze that data, the different points on your face, the different points on your hands, um, your body structure, your face in China, 
uh, over time, they recognize that you're disgruntled or whatnot. So they send someone to your home or in the United States catching up to that and starting to analyze people because, you know, you got a mean face. You know. What does that mean for black women? Because they always saying that black women got the rest in be yeah, fake. they need to come get me now because I'm so animated. I just be in my thoughts. And Tam is like, so you are talking to yourself in your brain, and I will have a slew of facial expressions and not say a word, but I'm thinking. So I think that is just so unfair because you don't know how a person processes information. So that's that's a no no for me. Yeah. Um, let me. I'm trying to think. Was there anything else left? that I needed to share on this page. I mean, that I try to go, I try not to go too, too deep and start losing you all, but I just wanted to know you, show you what was out there and what's happening. Um, I haven't, I didn't even get into uh, the cybersecurity aspect of other things that I want to share. Um, yeah. When we, when we're talking about, um, logistics and your um, driver's license and what's in your driver's license. I didn't. Oh, the new it. ones. Yeah. I didn't even get into all of that. Uh, but you can look that stuff up. I probably may talk about it some next week. Depends on. That's like your global travel for like I have for um, to from the, what is that? What is that uh, agency? Homeland, Homeland Security. Security, my global travel card. So it's, for me, I I like to have my false sense of security because you never know what's going on. It's like we're in one of those superhero movies. You know, we're living one life, but we never know what's going on behind the scenes for real, for real. And um, I think if we knew, we would be like an endless wreck because I mean, there's things, there's fights going on right now. We have no clue. There's things being stopped right now, and we don't have any clue about what that could be or what that is right now. So, hey. Yep. I don't and, think I want to know everything. <laughs> no. You might not want to know everything, but, I'm, you know, I'll just put I want to know enough to be, to, to be informed. But, you know, a lot of the stuff that the government is doing, I mean, we have these conversations all the time and it's just like, nah, I want to brunch in peace. Yep. Agenda 21, a.k.a. the Green, the Green New Deal. Yep. Yeah, I, I mean, I can go on right on these uh, topics or whatnot. Um, but I just want to show you um, what Linux lives, really. <laughs> That's and you know we're talking about foundational things, and then what that what, what those things look like, like the, those verticals. These are verticals that we're talking about, um, and so these verticals turn into these projects. They turn into these real life situations, um, even with. Uh, being able to in your car, like they say, they're watching you in in your in the car, right? They're watching you, um, your eyes in the car. But not only are they watching your you. eyes in the car, the cars now are able to, well, as you're driving, you know, as you're driving, they they then um, display to you sales or advertise uh what's what's in the area like oh what's going on you need you you may need to go here you may need to this and that's based upon again your car still gathering data about you right still know your habits and where you're going and what you're driving to and, and that data is more than likely getting pushed somewhere and somebody's doing analysis and presenting these things to you right so um just Open your eyes is all I'm saying uh, to, to, you know, people always ask me, how can I get into tech? You're already in it. 
you're oh, yeah. already in it. You definitely you're already not in it. Money on it, but you're already in it. <laughs> right. And I agree. I agree with Brown Foxy. This needs to be a group discussion face to face. So again, with women in Linux, our community drives the conversation. So make sure that you come to a meetup and let's and, and pick a topic. And we will go ahead and say, you know, this Wednesday we want to talk about you know cybersecurity, crypto security what what does that mean in the space crime centers like you know and, and bring what you've researched yourself and, and and let's share these things like i said nine times out of ten i want to know enough to be dangerous but I, everything if you knew a fraction of it you wouldn't even leave a house like absolutely not and then you think your house is is, is, is listening in. You'll be in there with a foil box need medication. Mm -mm. No, yeah. ma'am. And then, and also, um, you know, the, <laughs> 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 I don't want to bring it up, but I'm going to bring it up because in the den, I'm going to be like, why are you bringing it up? So I'm bringing this up. She's going to be like, why are you bring it up? So it was a debate this week, right, with me, with me and a, a guy friend of mine. And it was exactly. about a guy friend of mine. Okay. Yeah. And it was about OnlyFans. And the debate was, what are those people going to do once that platform goes away? And it, and so in my engineering mind is someone else is going to create something else. And they're going to get on that platform, that new platform. Right. Um, but I'm saying that from this perspective, and let me and I and I and I talked about this in another Slack group. So, if Black China is on the platform and she's making twenty million a month, how much are they getting? If 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 the, it was on CNN and I, and I and I had the link, I'll put it up there. If 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 a nurse, she an ICU nurse, quit her job and she making two hundred thousand dollars a month, how much are they getting? So now the question becomes: Is why y'all trying to get rid of them? And in my mind, why would you leave that much money on the table? And so I asked around, and some people were saying that it was due to the fact that MasterCard and Visa and them didn't want to take those, take their take their uh, money anymore because of what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's crazy because they do, they they do that. Like you have to go to a certain processor and i just happen to have a cousin of mine that has an adult toy company and she sells adult adult toys and i didn't know that paypal doesn't take those type of transactions like you have to get another processor to do that and it's just like you know so, you don't want to say a buck is a buck but i mean you're so not now, you know my wheels is turning you know, my wheels is turning at that point is, okay, so who going to create the platform to take the payments, who? right? Who going who gonna to create the platform? Because I just want to know how Playboy been able to do it all this time. Pornhub been able do to do it. it all this time. All these other ones been able to do it all this time. So now you tell me that they that these, I'm not, and listen, you do what you do on OnlyFans. I'm not judging. What I'm simply saying is, That's give me my money. Right? Give me my money. <laughs> that's your business. You know, that's, that, that's that's your business. But, you know, any business begets another business because that's transaction fees. That's millions of dollars of transaction fees that they're getting by pro providing a platform for whatever people are doing, whether you're looking at people's toes or something totally different. Like, I think, you know, OnlyFans came with the the idea to you know have a another membership type of portal for your people but it could be cooking it could be food designing it could be women in linux at tech and for our hardcore people that that come and want to hear all information that's what that platform is 
it was made for. But again, the community drives the conversation. So now you have, you know, this extra little way where you can make a couple of a lot of extra couple of dollars. And yeah. I'm just scratching my head like, she, do I need to clean up on OnlyFans? Like, what? 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 I don't want I'm that just money. Vacuum on OnlyFans. Like, yeah. what the heck? It's crazy. Right. So, and I'm just saying like this. So when you think about it, like from the business perspective, right? Um, you know, the money that gets transacted, you know, are, are, can could they use somebody like a Robin Hood where you're now paying that person inside of Bitcoin or finance, or maybe you 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 just set up a crypto exchange and you pay that, that those people in crypto now, um, now you got a hard wallet, you know what I'm saying? Now you, now you're playing, you know, here we go. Uh, federal regulation starts to step in. Because the uh, government needs their cut. <laughs> cut Sam the check. Cut him the check. Number one, cut him the check. Long as he yeah. has his piece of the pie, he's okay. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, backing back into that is... Now the conversion of, of that, how do I convert that so I can live off of it? You know, what does that look like? You know, but again, on the back end, Visa and MasterCard take cryptocurrency. But you then you think about somebody getting $20 million a month. Where do you move that type of money? Because now exactly. that not, that's not cash money. That's documented money. And at the bank, if you make 10 grand, they have to report that income. So people are not making this money and it's 20 million in their pocket. The government still got to get a cut of that money because it's reported income. I'm pretty sure OnlyFans has to send that person a, a W-9. You fill out a W-9 for an I-9 at the end of the year for that because that's that's income. That's profit for for your business. So that's that's crazy money. And it's just, it, and again, like, where do you put all of that money? Where do you put it? What are you doing with that money? So so Tyga was on the platform and he well, after they announced they were going to do no more. He wouldn't create his own platform. And he was making, I want to say he was making seven million a month. I think that's what his that's what you read from that list. I mean, these people are making crazy money, crazy money. But again, also it is, you know, I would say there's a price tag to this stuff. Like you can oh, yeah. go do be have anything you want, but are you willing to pay that price tag? You it, you know, it is an to me, there's we just did this whole thing on security and you are giving people so much of yourselves. You don't even have, you know, you're not even you anymore. Black China is not the, I mean, and no disrespect to Black China, but she's not the same girl that came out, you know, and you kind of lose yourself and she's morphing into like this like little cat lady. And I'm just like, man, she was such a beautiful girl with, with a great personality. And now, you know, you're getting all of this this stuff, but uh -huh. you know, to your body and all that type of stuff. I mean she already had the square butt, but you know, these Why other be a square butt cat lady. <laughs> square butt cat lady. You know, but I mean I think she fixed it you a little <laughs> You but you know, and she's and, but these are young you people. Say, bless your heart. <laughs> bless your heart. You know, but these are young people, and that's another conversation. All of the surgery people are even getting, you know, before they turn into adult. Like you don't even have your big people teeth, and you're getting dentures. Like that's a whole nother show. <laughs> All right. That's so a whole nother show. I pulled but, up. The, I pulled up the article. Right. Oh. Okay. Here's here, here's the article. So you know, like people don't think you're making this up, right? So it says this chick, um, Mila Mondale, 1.9 million, Safari, 1.9 million, Pia Mia, 2.2 million, uh, 2.49 million for Jim 101, Erica Mina, 4.4, Mia Khalifa. And these are our month. Did you see that? This is per month. Uh, Tiger, 7.69 million monthly from subscriptions and other revenue. Cardi B, 9.34 million a month. Bella Throne, 11 million. Black China, 
uh, 20 million a month from the website. The Rally TV has an estimated net worth of 1.6 million. I don't know how she got an estimated net worth of 1.6 million and she making 20 million a month. I don't know. That's what's being reported. I'm just reporting I'm what I'm saying. I'm not mad. Yes, friend, the square butt cat lady. Ain't she talking. mean, friend? She is mean. She be like, I'm, I'm not I'm being not mean. mean. I'm, my, I'm nice. I'm such a I am girl. a nice lady. I no. am. <laughs> I'm a nice butt. lady. Not square butt. No, dear. that's not nice. It was. You know, they get that stuff in the alley, and then it, it, it settles a little wonky, and so they have to get it, like, out and then reshape. It's a process. I have no idea what they're doing on OnlyFans. I don't know. I mean, I started to log in just to find out. Like, what are you doing on OnlyFans? I'm going to start vacuuming. That's what I'm going to start doing. I'm going to find these already. It's already people on, on, you, on YouTube that are already vacuuming people watching. Va vacuuming, donate money while they clean up, which is okay to me. Wait, so I don't know. Go, go to the homepage. Uh, want to be natural and uh, see what they do yeah. and see yeah. what comes up on the home page of uh, yeah, maybe so, the, the alley. The, it's the alley. So, so the Tiger, the, 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 Tiger deletes his OnlyFans account and launches My Star platform. So, and then OnlyFans went back and reversed it and said, Hey, we want everybody to create on our, our show. Don't worry about deleting your content. We still take that content. I think you would. You're missing out on a lot of money. I just I just can't conceive that you're going to be okay with missing that type of money. I wouldn't. I'd be like, bring bring all. Bring your tire. Bring your weary. Bring your toes. Bring your whips, your chains. We are we are one. I'm not going to yeah, stop my check. Yeah, to your your shenanigans. Head. Yeah, they will watch you uh, clean your house. Yes, and and you don't even, they they'll just watch it. You don't even have to have any commentary. Yep, they just put music on and they watch you clean up your house. Oh, there's a friend. There's so many things on organization and people buying new furniture and setting it up. Oh, oh damn really yeah. shows me things that I sh I should be doing because it's just things my OCD self does. She was like, I'm just going to record it. <laughs> See how many views you get. Yep. I'm going to clean up now, today. I'm so excited. After brunch. Yeah. So I wanted y'all to have that. And that, the last part was a sidebar. But then you think about technology behind it. You know, I did go to OnlyFans and look at their jobs because I just wanted to see what technology behind it and the data and the analysis of the data and what do they do with the data? What 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 are they what are they doing with that data? Right? You you're doing that, right? So what do you do with that? Let me see. Go to OnlyFans now. Let's go look at. You see. gotta love. You gotta love how we Linux when we go into OnlyFans to find out what jobs they have because I'm. They're all tech jobs. You see, we got about how it works referral store. Let's go to about. Let's see if we can get anything. Mission. Let's see. All right. How it works, contact, store statement, um, blog. You might have to Google their careers. Yeah, let me go to contact. Or what's their, what's their, uh, they might have a different name. Oh, this is only contact. Mm, branding, they have a store. Let me see. Um, only thing you know, keep wanting me to log in. So only fans and then it's typing engineering. Working at OnlyFans glass door. The best part. Let's go careers. See, I was looking it up. Um, I don't know. That's K team. Let's 
this Vox. It's somebody that's keeping their web their website up and somebody's analyzing that data. I don't care what nobody say. It says OnlyFans.com, Chloe Mix platforms, Verge. Let's see. Working at OnlyFans, OnlyFans recruiting. They have some stuff. You're looking up. I'm looking up something. I see something on um, Indeed, and then they have an OnlyFans dot recruitment Instagram. Yeah, I'm on that now, but I don't see what is that. Join the number one friendship. So they got it somewhere. I don't know. If there may be an agency that recruits for them, uh, which could possibly be uh, the situation, but I'm not sure. Hmm. Real time software in that same piece, but yeah, it didn't come up. So I had to do some investigation on it, find it. When I find it, I let you know. I'm just curious, like, what do you do? What do you What do you do with data analytics at, at OnlyFans? Like, I just curious. What do you do? How you optimize the uh, site and so forth? I see. Yeah, I don't know how much they will make. Yep, people are nosing. Uh, yes, I eat ice ice on my YouTube channel. People watch those videos more than my unboxing and makeup reviews. Yep. See? Just yep. eat nice. Yep. I'm cutting up food, the whole a ASMR. Um, you can... Go here, ASMR, um, videos, preparing you in your bed. Uh, I mean, just psh, the list goes on here. <laughs> eating, eating ice cream, eating uh, pickles. Uh, like, yeah, like this one right here, chopping food to me, like the guy I watched this, see the noise, and just, you know, chopping up boots. That was the craziest stuff to me ever. Little mini food, making a little mini sushi or whatever, and actually cooking it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean... Money to be made out here. That's all I'm saying, right? <laughs> uh, and, you know, I, I think as time goes on, uh, a lot of uh, the, a lot of the OnlyFans and YouTube and stuff like, especially with a lot of these content creators, well, I won't say a lot. There have been several content creators that have been murdered and so forth. I think we're going to start seeing cybersecurity, security morph into more than what we see now right like i wouldn't even i would not even be surprised if we start looking at surveillance of the number of the the consistent users that come to your site um and and surveillance on that as well too i wouldn't be surprised if it morphed into something like that um so now you get a better handle like well who was coming to see this person every day what are they constant? What are they? They already looking at what you look at based upon your suggestions. Anyway, they're already gonna make those suggestions to you. But again, start surveil that surveillance there and analyzing that. Yeah, that's what I said. It's a price tag to that. You have to be very conscious. I think you know it is very. The money is alluring, but I think a long time at you know at some point people don't look at it long term. They only look at you know, that their images are going to live on the internet for a while. But what does that mean for yourself and your person and the people around you? Because nine times out of 10, people don't come for you directly. They mm -hmm. come for who you are around. And like I had a friend that was um, auditioning for a reality show. And I said, well, the reality show is not just your reality. What do they do when they talk to that sister you haven't spoken with in years and you guys have all this strife? What if they talk to somebody you went to high school with? Like you are opening a Pandora's box when you um, open yourself up to 
um, television, the internet, or, or I mean, in 2021, I mean, it's just, it's a trap. Yeah, Brown Foxy, it's, it's just setting up a trap. Yep. Well, that's all I had. Is it? Um, yeah, that's all I had. I don't believe you. I hope I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for coming out. Uh, last week we took a break. We um, did, and we had a ball. We needed the break. Tam didn't do anything but sleep. She didn't do anything exciting. Oh, and put on your stunner shades, my G. My G, put on your stunner shades. She bought sunglasses and relaxed. And so uh, we got some sweet, we did 30 episodes of Tech Stocks and Jobs. And, you know, we are women in Linux. So you look up sometimes and you just need a break. So we took a 30 episode break and just chilled out and regrouped. We didn't go far. We didn't even leave the state of Florida, but we left our local area and explored a little bit and, and had a good time. It was a much needed break. So now, um, we are gearing up for our first trip out of the country this year. This, is good. this, is this, this year, year. we've been out of the country, but this year, this our first trip out of the COVID, the COVID country. Yeah. I am, I am trying not to overthink that one. Um, I'm but it's overthinking it. It's doing way yeah, it, it shoots. You know, you know what you do at your house, but you don't know where they them is people do at their own house. Just so, travel, just get you a Ghostbuster suit. And travel. I don't want to, that'd be fly though. <laughs> the little khaki jumpsuit suit. suit with the little pack pack. And you know, when people come just to go with a Ghostbuster suit, them, put, a make thing of lights, put a light thing of Lysol in the back and just spray as you walk down the aisle. I didn't have this can of Lysol in my purse, you guys. I got to show it to you. It's, it's what people couldn't find Lysol during the COVID. I've had this can of Lysol in my pocketbook for since 19, 2019. Yep. Somebody said they want to move down to Florida. Come on down. Oh, well, I'm sorry that you can't do Florida. I love it. Um, there's nowhere else I'd rather be. They can say what they want to say about Florida, but it depends on where you're at and who you're around. But I am having a blast. Put this in front of me. I got another pair of shades. I should get up and get those so you can see. Oh them. Lord, that that is supposed to be like for a happy hour. No, we, yeah, she got shades, y'all. She got plenty, plenty, plenty shades. Um, any questions? Any comments? Anything? Anybody wants to add before we um head up on out of here? <laughs> That's a huge can of lights. Oh, that's normally how they come. That's a regular can of Lysol. It was probably in a four pack from Sam's. Let me tell you, when I when people talk about me and I pull out my hand wipes and all my stuff, I ain't got the Rona. Hold on, let me get that COVID protocol. Let me get my next one. Then I then we be ready to go. Let me just get the next one. Hold on. Is she gonna really walk off camera? I'm not gonna even get her walking off camera. You guys gonna get a little bit of me. Any information on um, SAP jobs? Uh, I don't know what kind of information you're looking for and what what type of SAP jobs there are. Because from what I understand about SAP, is it it covers all industries. So LW, is there a specific industry? Because you can definitely Google it. Um, yeah, Tashika, a uh, hand sanitizer, it works, but I, it's just like another coating of stuff. I want some soap and water for my hands. I need some soap and water. I need something that is going to um, wash it away because for me, I just use common sense. And if they say it, it, it the virus does, uh, you can wash it away, I'm washing, I'm washing everything, I'm washing it, I'm washing it off. Okay, I think um, Stunner is back. Well, I gotta be Stunner. Come on, mm-hmm. Stunner. What is the Slack schedule? Um, Natasha, there is no sl- Slack schedule per se. We're all in different time zones and in actually different countries. So you can go in the Slack anytime you want. I think Slack kind of um, is more active during a certain time. Like, 
you know, during the working hours, it may be between seven and nine at night when people are studying and stuff, but our stack uh, cracks 24 seven. Congratulations, LW, on your for HANA and financial accounting training. That's awesome. Um, am I, I'm a shade girl. You know what? I better not wear my side because I'll lose them. How about that? You know how many watches and shades I've lost? I just can't, I don't keep up with that kind of stuff. I got alcohol on. too. You, yeah, you clean out your nostrils with some alcohol or some hydrogen peroxide. So I stocked up when people couldn't get Lysol, I got me some hydrogen peroxide and I got all levels of alcohol. I got 50%, 70%, 91% and acetone and vinegar. So Yeah, when the pandemic first hit, um, <laughs> we were standing in a, in a grocery store and people were like, we can't find Lysol. I said, buy Clorox. But not only that, it was whole <laughs> bottles of Lysol liquid that was on the shelves. And I'm just like, am I missing something here? Yeah. Like, there is Lysol. Yeah, people like, like, on I, the I, shelf. like, yeah, just buy it and spray it on your stuff and then wipe it down. Like, I don't understand. You know, people lose a lot of common sense, you know, but it's okay. <laughs> It, one, it was one lady, she was stressing in there. She was like, oh my God, I do no lights off. I'm looking around for it. I'm like, or you can just buy like some Clorox and the liquid Lysol or and some or some detergent and wipe it down. Like, I don't understand. It's all good. Make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Leave some comments after we get off below. I am going to be adding links. We'll put we're growing. We are growing. We got an office this year. We got a new vehicle for the business this year. We are kind of excited. Sometimes, like I said, when you're in it, you look up and all these things are happening and you don't even you know, acknowledge the good things. So there's some good things happening. We're growing. We're looking for people to um, work with. And so some things are getting done this year when it comes to programming and stuff. So we do want to do a, an in-person meetup. Dion probably won't be there. I'll be there. And she'll be like, oh, I don't know about those folks. I'm just being honest with y'all. She'll probably, and if she did know it, she'll probably try to spray you with Lysol or something like that. So, oh, I'm I'll giving you an elbow. Like, hey, I'm still doing the elbow. Like, how you doing? Uh, I'll probably do the in-person meetup. Um, but that's what the car is for. So we can travel. Um... It's a van. It's a passenger van. But we get a chance to travel. And we get, get a chance to uh, travel to different places and meet people. You know, we're going to first start here in Tampa and St. Pete. Um, and then we'll go out. I mean, we've been wanting to travel since we started. It was one of our things was traveling. Yeah, that was our biggest thing was getting a vehicle and traveling. And we were going to do a, well, we're still doing a um, traveling uh, lab. So mm -hmm. yeah, we still want you to be able to uh, put your hand on the tech because I think what happens in technology is the automation. You get so caught up in the automation that you re you don't realize that there's really you know wires to this and you know servers and racks and all that other good stuff. So we want you guys to put your hand on the tech. Oh, yeah. I see y'all talking about the 124. Don't forget with the 124 class to if you got questions, ask them in Slack. You don't have to ask me directly. You can ask everybody. That way you can be a part of the discussion and people can help you. There's more than one way to do and get to answers. I try to go through those questions while we're while we're, you know, while I'm in in there and training. But sometimes I may not get to everything, but, you know. You all have each other, right? That's the whole point of the community so that you all can have each other. If you don't rely and trust each other, then who you gonna trust, right? So that's what we that's what we wanna um, encourage you to do. All right, I have a four o'clock meeting because um, D don't wanna do the four o'clock meeting. But. I'm gonna make brunch. That's what I'm, D's gonna do. D's gonna make brunch and Tamika's going to the four o'clock meeting because you know what? Teamwork makes the dream work. 
That's when you just want to spray it with some Lysol through the thing. Shh, shh, shh. She's going to be so happy that she has brunch and I'm make a little mimosa. You know, life is, life is good. Life is good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll catch y'all next week. Next week uh, on Howie Linux, also 1130. If you are with us on Wednesdays, this Wednesday we'll meet. This Thursday we, we won't meet because we meet every other Thursday. And that's for the RSCHA study group. Yep. That's the RSCHA study group. What I do want to do eventually is I want to break off and have someone else run the RSCHA 124 class. So those who are, who feel they are advanced enough to run the RHCA uh, 124 class, it is a paid position. 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 It is a paid position uh, <laughs> for someone else to, to run it uh, while we take off on the 134. That way we can always keep people coming in and then moving them on to the 134 class, right? And eventually we'll probably start having different instructors to do Ansible, OpenShift, all of that. If not, I just continue to do it myself on mine. It keeps me fresh anyway. Or well, come be a guest. Come be a guest on the show. Let's talk keeps, Linux. Keeps me in the money. But okay. <laughs> so yeah. Again, come be a guest on the show. If you have an interesting topic and you did some research and you want to share yeah. and see other people's thoughts. Come be a guest on the show. Oh, if you want to be a guest on How We Linux next week, come uh, come through or or take stocks and jobs. Uh, pop in. You don't have to stay the whole time. You can just pop in and pop out. So, and if you're a little camera shy, you might just want to speak at a meetup. That is fair game as well. Again, we are a sounding board for your tech career. So, if you've never spoken to a group before, come and do a, a presentation. It could be a five minute in. Uh, Ignite talk. It could be a 15 minute career journey talk. It could be a 30 minute presentation on something that you're learning. That's the only, and you can add those things to your resume because Women in Linux, it is a, I, I consider us a hardcore tech group, uh, even though we do have a good time. So you can add those things to your resume. Mm -hmm. So um, anything that you get here, Remember that it is not just about some people just looking at each other and not getting things done. This is your network. This is your tech network in your career, in your journey. Yep. So next week we see y'all have fun. Don't forget to study up 20 minute increments. Don't forget see to share, like, like, subscribe, notifications. Uh, and by all means, at the end of the day, be kind to yourself. All right. Do that. I like it. See you later.